I'm sure this song goes back, it may go back a thousand years for all we know. And Helen Creighton probably collected a dozen different versions of it. Different melodies, different words. There was an old farmer lived over the hill. If he ain't moved out, he's living there still singing. I ride, did I fly, did I, did I day. The devil come up to him one day, said, one of your family, I'm going to take away singing. I died, you did a by, did a lie, did a lie day. Oh, please don't take my eldest son, there's work on the farm and it's got to be done singing. I died, I did a lie by, did a lie, did a lie day. It is said that folklore is the basis of a culture. If this is true, then folklorist Helen Creighton helped define the culture of Maritime Canada. For more than 50 years, Creighton traveled the highways and byways of the region in search of ancient ballads, superstitions, and tales of ghosts and buried treasure. Helen Creighton's legacy lives on in the stories, songs, and images of today. I've always considered that part of my job as a collector is to provide the raw material for our writers and musicians. And it's always a great thrill when my songs come back to me, or our songs, I should say, in another form. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Maritime's own Rankin family, Raylene Rankin. Thank you very, very much. Let me say it's a real pleasure to be here. Thank you all for being here with us. This next one is from the Helen Creighton Collection, and it's one of the more popular ones. I remember it first um, from my mother whistling it while she was hanging out many lines of wash <laughs> in the morning. It's called uh, If I Were a Blackbird. knew a maiden a maiden so rare fell in love with a sailor a young sailor boy he courted her truly by night and by day then at length her young lover he sailed far Music means different things to different people. I usually give at least two definitions, if not more. Uh, 150 years ago, the term was invented in Germany and Scandinavia where folk means people. And people's music meant the music of the peasant the class, ancient and anonymous. Nowadays, to the average person, a folk song is some song somebody's made up and usually sung with an acoustic guitar, standing at a mic. Some old grandmother singing a thousand-year-old lullaby to a grandchild. She's not a folk singer. She doesn't have a mic. She does not play the guitar. She's not standing on a stage. She's just an old woman singing an old song. <laughs> 
Of course, she's the real folk singer, according to the older definition. Rocked by the baby, you cradle is green. Father is a nobleman, mother is the queen. Helen Creighton was working as a freelance journalist when Chance brought her to a career in folklore in 1928. She was in search of new subjects to write about. When it was suggested, she try her hand at collecting folk songs. Folklorists of the day were in search of child ballads, ancient English folk songs from the collection of Professor Francis James Child. He brought together 305 different ballads, some of them with as many as 20 different variations that he had taken from old manuscript sources. And he felt that this was uh, the entire corpus, pretty much, of ballads in the English-speaking world. Helen borrowed her father's car and headed for Heartlands Point, near the mouth of Halifax Harbor, in search of the ancient ballads. She knocked on the door of Enos Heartland, who, after telling her stories of witches, ghosts, and superstitions, finally agreed to sing for her. So he stepped outside and he looked up and he said, you see them stars in the sky? Well, as many stars as there are up there is as many songs as I used to be able to sing. But now my teeth is gone and my voice is rusty. And then he sang, when I was a young man, I took delight in love. I gave my heart unto a girl who did in constant prove she promised for to be my own true love. Helen told me later on that when she first heard Enos Hartland sing, When I was a young man, I took delight in love, that was the moment that she realized that if this one man knew this many songs, imagine what must be out there. Imagine the kind of beliefs, superstitions, myths, cures, remedies, all the fascinating things that she eventually went on to collect must be here in Nova Scotia. And she thought, I can spend the rest of my life at this. She realized then, by hearing that first song, that she had just driven down what she came to call her path of destiny. Windy weather, boys, stormy weather, boys, when the wind blows, we're all together, boys. Blow your winds where to leave, blow your winds blow. Jolly the weather, boys, that is you go. During the course of Helen's 60-odd year career, it's understandable that she would meet literally thousands of people who would give her information. Those people are, are most commonly referred to as informants. These were very important people in Helen's life. One of the very first things she ever said to me when I asked her about advice, she said, remember, Clary, they are the teachers, you are the students. And Helen valued those friendships and valued those, those teachers, people like Ben Henneberry, who really gave her her first major collection. Ben Henneberry was the patriarch of Devil's Island, a small island near the mouth of Halifax Harbor, once populated by a few fishing families, now uninhabited. Ben had a legendary reputation as a fine singer and knew a good number of the ancient ballads that Helen was yearning for. Eventually, due to a facial paralysis, Ben passed his songs on to his son, Edmund. Quad is rounder than a ring, God is higher than a king, cried the false knight to the child on the road. The sun is rounder than a ring, God is higher than a king, cried the pretty little child, only seven years old. On the morn on bright May day, when nature painted all things gay, thought birds to sing and lambs to play and cry. It was along the shores of Devil's Island that Helen would sit with Ben and collect many of the songs that appeared in her first book, Songs and Ballads of Nova Scotia. Helen was thrilled to share the glory of the book's publication with the man that helped make it all happen. Helen's collecting trips were long and arduous. She often traveled alone into communities where she knew no one. When she ventured upon someone who agreed to sing or tell her a story, she carefully recorded them while taking detailed notes. And if you'll sing it in there, then you'll be able to hear it played back on the machine. 
When the collecting trips were over, Helen's work continued at Evergreen, her family home overlooking the Halifax Harbor, where she would sit and carefully type the notes of her findings. It was this fastidious attention to detail that resulted in more than a dozen books and more than 40,000 individual items. Helen's field journals provide daily descriptions of her collecting trips. And by lumbermen, and a lot of fishermen. And uh, they would say, oh, in the winter. Oh, yes, but that, that reminds me of so-and-so. And so that I was collecting all evening as well. Beautiful tune. <laughs> Hasn't it a nice air? Yes. Don't you think it's as lovely? All right. Well, I tell you, if you want to sing a good song, you want a good air to it. Yes. The collection also contains hundreds of audio tapes of folk tales and over 4,000 songs. It's probably the largest individually assembled body of folklore in the entire nation. What a good song, Miss Edson. Jocka Hazeldean. Why weep ye by the tide, lady? Why weep ye by the tide? I'll wed ye to my youngest son. And he shall be his bride. Teresa Doyle is a singer-songwriter from Caledonia, Prince Edward Island. Well known for her music for children, Teresa has recently been involved in teaching the folk song tradition to a new generation. I dyed my petticoat to dye the red, and around the world I picked my bread. Friends and relations think me dead, call the cat to kill you at the low. The Helen Creighton collection has been really important to me. I've recorded quite a few songs from the collection that she's left us. Yeah, it's just great having those kinds of resources. We really need to value them. I wish and I wish and I wish in vain. I wish I was a young maid again, maid again. I never shall be. I think we're going to have to work a little harder to keep our traditions over the next couple of generations because I was fortunate in that I was born into old world PEI. You know, I would. I went to a one-room school with a pot-bellied coal stove and the Christmas concert behind a couple of sheets, you know, no electricity. And so the strengths of my tradition come from that background. I've carried those forward. So for the next generation, I think we're going to have to really make sure that our kids get lots of exposure to their own culture.